What is up guys? We are indeed back in this thing. And if you've used the internet in the past few months, you've probably seen these Dali AI generated images of like things that would never happen, like Joe Biden trail cam footage or like Gordon Ramsay eating a Big Mac or one of you guys with a girlfriend. What did he say? Hey. Well, I figured before the AI take over and we see some iRobot, we might as well use them to make some video effects. So we're actually just gonna be using Photoshop, the built-in neural filters in there. We're gonna be transferring some footage into Photoshop using the neural filters to get some AI looks and then transfer them back into Premiere Pro or After Effects, whatever you're using. So in this Rocky video, you can see they have some like AI trippy generated effects throughout the video. And there's a bunch of different ways you can get these AI looks. I'm gonna be specifically going over something that's built into Photoshop, but I'm pretty sure they use like a website that you just upload your footage to. It takes a lot of time. This is gonna be a little quicker and give you a different result. The way we're doing it in this video, I haven't seen anyone use yet, so there might be a little bit more creative ways you can do it or put your own twist on it. So starting off, all you really want is a clip that you want the AI effect to take place on. So for here, this looks like a good clip. So once you've selected a clip, go up to file, export, and whatever editing software you're using, and then go to export and make a new folder called like AI effect or something. That way, cause it's gonna export as a bunch of images, you're gonna wanna have it in a folder. That way it doesn't just make a huge mess. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in this folder. You can name it whatever you want, but the most important thing when exporting is going to format wherever your format options is, or Premiere Pro is just a JPEG. So then I'm gonna go to frame rate and I'm gonna uncheck and match those sequence settings. And I'm actually gonna put it at eight. If you're using a 24 frame per second sequence, and you put it at eight, it's basically dividing it by three. That means every image is gonna be three frames long. So that way you don't have to make the AI effect on every single frame. I think it makes it a little easier. If you wanna do all 24 frames per second, just keep in mind that you're gonna be doing the effect over and over again. We're gonna click render at maximum depth and then click export. And then go ahead and find wherever you exported them. For us, it's the AI effect folder and then just drag in that first image into your sequence. Now let's go ahead and play around with the neural filters. So select on the image you want it to take place on, go to filter, then neural filter. It's gonna take a second and open up all these. Now you'll see there's a bunch of like featured filters as well as beta filters and then stuff that's coming out soon. This is gonna be sick. The latent visions is like the real, real trippy stuff, but we can get something similar with style transfer. And I like the one that is landscape mixer. I think they both have really cool looks. You're gonna have to just play around with ones, see what you like the best. We're gonna use style transfer here and we're just gonna make sure that we select that on. And then you can see if we click any of these artist styles, it will load down here and you're gonna instantly transform your image into like this like trippy looking effect. And you can play around with the strength, the style opacity, you can see it kind of like blends in and the detail they'll make it like more blurry or less blurry and there's a bunch of different things it does it's like really cool you can bring up the background blur and it actually uses ai to find the subject in frame and you can see it found rocky here and it actually just makes everything besides him blurry i think that looks pretty cool and then if you go to image styles you can get a totally different look as well and the cool part is you can even use your own custom image so if you have something that you want to like have it emulate you can go ahead and do that as well i just want to see what it looks like if i just open up the image of itself and have it try to emulate that. So it has like an interesting, like glitchy look. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and use one of the presets just to show you guys. Like I said, you can download an image off Google or something and use that in your video like that. Let's go ahead and use this one down here. Uh, maybe bring the background blur like 50 or something. And let's go ahead and click OK. Now this is where it's a little tedious, but it's still quicker than most AI like websites. I found if you hit Control Alt S, it's gonna bring it up to save. And I just go ahead and override that one image. So we're just gonna go ahead and override one by one and click save. It's gonna ask you to replace it, click okay. And then just drag in that next image. And since we already did that effect, if you hold control alt F, it's gonna bring up the neural filters, but it's gonna apply the same exact effect over. It's gonna have the same values. And if you want, you can treat these like keyframes and you can increase the strength over time, in each image or whatever. For us, for the sake of tutorial, we're just gonna go frame by frame and apply the same settings. Again, control alt S, save that and overwrite these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the images because it's the same process over and over again, Control Alt F and Control Alt S. If you're clicking Control Alt F and it's not popping up, just make sure to select on the layer you want it to take place on and then it will pop up. If you're not like highlighted over the image in the layers section, it's not gonna pop up like that. And I know you can export videos and bring them in the Photoshop and kind of like use it as a video layer and there's like a timeline option. And I tried that out and it just doesn't really work too well with the neural filters. I figured this is the fastest way to do it. It might be a little tedious, but it's still gonna be faster than uploading your video to like those AI websites. And you have a little bit more control with this. That's why I think this way is pretty cool. It's definitely unique and there's time and place for both of them. But let's go ahead back into Premiere Pro and we're just gonna bring in that whole folder and we're gonna go and sort by name. That way they're in order. And now when we're bringing these images in, I'm gonna make sure to make them last 
three frames long because we exported them at eight frames per second. If you do plan on doing this throughout your whole video and you want it to all last three frames per second, I'd recommend you go up here to edit preferences and then go to timeline and then under still image default duration, make that three and then change that to frames. And then the next time you drag in an image, it's gonna be three frames long. You actually do have to restart Premiere Pro to do that. So it's not gonna show up right now. That's fine for this example, but if you do wanna just save a little bit of time in the future when doing it, I would recommend you do that. And now when we import them all and have them all last in three frames, you can see we have an effect that looks something similar to this. I think that looks pretty cool just like that. But what I'm going to actually do just to make it a little bit more interesting of an effect is nest it. I'm going to go ahead and like add a transition in and out. So it kind of gives you that illusion of an effect. Let's go ahead and use invert flash one and two from my essentials pack. That way it just has like this invert flash here for a second and kind of transitions in. And now on this nested sequence, you can drag on any effects you want or anything to spice it up. I went ahead and put some RSMB on it too, just to make it smooth out a bit. There's so many different things you can do with these neural filters that I didn't touch on in this video. But I'd recommend before you start doing the effect, drag in one of your images and just play around with all these different settings. There's so much you, that you can do. Landscape mixer, like I said, is a really cool one. You can get really creative with it and you can see how this kind of makes it look grassy in the background. And you can do that same concept of just copy and pasting that throughout with the landscape mixers and all these different ones are going to give you different options. For example, like day, night, sunset, like if you bring up sunset, it's going to change the background a little bit here and you can see it has a little bit of darker vibe and there's just so much you can do and it's going to interact with every photo differently because it's using AI to, you know, auto mask out your subject and then do stuff to the background. I think this one looks really cool. It's like almost putting grass on everything. It's not the most polished effects ever, but it's something cool that you can add to your video that like, makes it a little bit more unique. I just haven't seen many people utilize like neural filters in Photoshop to make it a video effect yet. So I think if you guys get on this, you can play around with it, make it your own and uh, kind of get ahead of the curve. And just because you're using a neural filter doesn't mean that you can't use any of these other Photoshop effects and tools in this and then bring it back into Premiere Pro. Honestly, there's so much creativity that you can get and get done with this. And you can also use masking and overlays and different effects in Premiere Pro and After Effects and DaVinci, all these programs to get different looks. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys in this one. If you haven't already liked the video, if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers subscribers. If you have a friend that is in the video editing world, go ahead and share the channel with them. It'd help me out a lot. If you haven't joined the discord already, be sure to do that. I'll have that link down below as well as my website where you can get the best video editing packs and presets. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys on this one. Peace.